Uh, this is the fourth type of mitzvah the Rabbanim we're doing it here. We're still in the Be'er Harishon, the first, first Be'er. This is the fourth uh, type of mitzvahs. Um, the mitzvahs that she'enam lisiag ulaged. They're not a fence. The klal hazeh ha'mitzvah she'tik bezman min hazman. So there, that includes some um, types of mitzvahs that are a specific, uh, you can look on with him if you want to. Uh, oh, you have one, good, you have one. Okay. Um, we're dealing with the fourth type of mitzvah durabonim, and which is not a siag. Last week we talked about things that are siag, that's a, a, like a fence around the Torah, is something where you've got uh, mitzvahs that you want to protect. And if you remember, he brought a, a, a marshal of... Uh, uh, anyway, uh, a, a, a muscle of uh, just like the in, in the Bria, the way Hashem created the world, you've got things that are um, you've got things that are a major, like an aver, for example, and uh, like the basic example, the eye. So just like the eye, Hashem created so-called, you know, so to speak, directly. You know, see, the, the eye was like a, a major concept, of, uh, a thing that the Abishu set up to be an eye. But then he says that the Bria itself, the Teva, the nature itself, had to develop something to protect the eye. So it created the eyelid. So the eyelid was like like a kind of a um, an action of the Bria itself. It's a very interesting thing that he, he talks like this. He's like an adaptation kind of idea. That the, that the Bria itself, the nature itself, is adding something in order to protect something which Hashem put into the Bria. So it's in the same sense, the Tzadikim, the Chachomim, were... Um, Adding things on to the mitzvahs to Raisa. Hashem directly gave us mitzvahs to Raisa at Sinai, and the Hafam, in order to protect those mitzvahs, uh, then, then added on, on mitzvahs that are simply to make sure that we don't uh, infract on those. Yeah, on things all the time. So that's, that's, uh, that's, that's a given. So now, now he's talking about these. Another category of mitzvahs is um, mitzvahs that. There were reasons for them to enact at particular times. So that would include things like Hanukkah and, uh, and Pira. Right? The Ezit Sad is Kashi Mitzvah Eli in Mitzvah Satoiro, Acha Einan Toiro Bifne Atzma. It was what's the connection between those mitzvahs and the Torah? The written Torah. It could be like a, you could think of it like a Torah in itself. These are not derived from the Torah. There's something that's, it's, there were enact, enactments of the the, the uh, Rabbanim, and it's something that does no direct relationship with the Torah itself. So how? What's the what? 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 Are, what they're, gives they're them their authority? They're not based in sources, also. No, these are not based in the Hanukkah. You don't find. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yes, yes, I'll be punished. Yeah. Right. So um, the things that the that the, that the yeah. Rabbonim enacted. So kasher to I and so what's the unity between that and the Torah? How can it all be called one Torah if these are extra things that the Rabbonim enacted? The kasher to I and the Dova. Um, well, he's not putting it in that category. Um, is this is he asking just generally like how because it's not being. It's not. I think the reason why it's not Baltoisid. He asked that before about the Baltoisid. The Baltoisid is more. Is he the way he explains Baltoisid is uh, if you would like say five tzitzis. Adding to a commandment that's already written. Right, exactly. This is like something that wasn't even written. Right, so they're not putting it all over as being something that Hashem gave us this But mitzvah. the general question is that uh, how could the Rabbana enact something that wasn't written in the Torah? Right, that's that has no relationship to something in the Torah to the point where it becomes like two separate things. There's no. Good there's question. no. I can see heretics trying to like pinpoint that. Like, well, we don't believe what you say because uh, you know, right. that's not written in the Torah. Uh, well, well, by the way, one thing that we talked about, I think it was last week, is that according to the introduction to this edition from the Kumbhakar Shalim, they, they found a safe. Her, they found a book written by Goyim that asked a lot of the questions that were the questions that, that the Maharal said he's dealing with. And so it appears that he wrote this largely for Goyim. Right Even though it's written, what's your question? To explain it to them. To explain it. You know, he felt it important that the Goyim should also respect the Tachm of the Torah. And he says there specifically that he didn't want to 
uh, just pass it off, you know, superficially. And it's like, well, you know, this is the way it is, and that's it. You know, if you want to explain it in depth, you know, how these, things, these, these questions can be answered. And of course, you know, throughout Jewish history, there's also been questions about things like this. And, and the fact is that, that uh, the more we study of this, the better we understand them as well. So, you know, so it benefits as well. Anyway. Okay, so um, so as if you look at it closely, you'll see the gam dovizet in kasha. There's no, there's no. This really isn't isn't such a uh, big uh, difficult thing. Kima mesh kol hamitzvus shahemi divreim kila miyashlim haudam ad shahishlam bechol amaisim aruim lios nesim. Because what he's saying is that 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 in order for a person to become complete, right? There's an idea of completion. The Torah is trying to make a complete person, trying to complete the person. So the, there should be nothing lacking in his character or whatever. So we see that these things are things that that, that, that are sack in the person, that fix the person to a level and bring them to a person where he really becomes completed through these things as well. To, to distance oneself from the things that he's supposed to be distanced from. So everything then becomes a, one unity together of a complete type of thing. So the ain lisha in Cain loma ainam nisim lisha. So, you, but we shouldn't ask. We shouldn't ask that. Well, if that's true, that in order to create this, you know, perfect complete complete thing, then everything should be from Hashem directly. Why should Hashem work through the the chachamim here? The zedich seed embraces as the yipach the app of nishmas kai. The advurativ in kilam hey midat teva. The teva poy elis shekach zida Hashem is borach as as hat teva. We call the vurim ativim. So he says that that Hashem created the, the nature, right? And all of these things that are included within nature, nature itself uh, is 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 poetic. Hashem created nature to do specific things, to 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 create. Uh, a world the way it's supposed to look, and so he put the, the power in there. Hashem was the the, uh, the the nature to create everything that had to be had to be created. The kach zeba atzmoi he ain So it's 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 not necessary that everything be all the same. In other words, the same level of directness. So it, whether Hashem did it himself directly or he was he worked through nature to to accomplish that. That thing. The main thing is that it that it exists. So it doesn't matter where it came from, and you can't expect everything to be on the same level. There are things that are more direct, and some things that are, are more indirect. Um, so those things which are which are what we call a seichel elyon, so like something like a higher spiritual truth. That's on a higher, you know, level of intellect. Truth or, 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 or intellect? Intellect, okay. Because everything's true. Yeah. You know, that comes from us, everything's true, obviously. But there's a higher level, a deeper level, a higher level of something that's called, we call el yoyim. And that's a seichel el It's like a higher spiritual, you know, uh, uh, level. And those things are directed from Hashem. So it's about Vurim Hashem, Einem kol kach seichel el ki el yoyim, Ein mitzvah stivreim, so then there are things that are on a, on a lower level, more of a, of a, of a, uh, there's a seichel element, it's something slowly transcendent, it's something, you know, from Hashem, we couldn't, couldn't ever, you know, uh, figure anything like that out on our own. But, the, but the, there's, a, there's also more of a human seichel, which is the seichel of the Chachonim. And even though it's a godly seichel, but it's something that, that's more of a human element to it. And those things were the things that, they, that the Chachonim uh, were, were misadded. So just like Hashem created nature, and nature is then uh, creates things according to natural laws which Hashem set up according to the Ratzon Hashem. The Adavar Shehi Nivdal Bilti Gashmi He Menashmid Hashem is Bura, and something that is supernatural, something that goes beyond nature, something directly from Hashem, because he can't, Hashem can't. Be poil through nature to create something that's supernatural, something that transcends nature, has to come directly from Hashem. Something that's within nature itself comes from, through, through nature. But both of those elements are necessary to a person for his for his for his, his, uh, his completeness. He has to have both those things that are transcendent and those things that come through nature.
Kach said Arts my Adubish and Seichel of the Kilo Gamri. So the things that are is the same way as in the Russian nature. He's also saying in terms of the of the Seichel itself, there are things that are completely from from the supernatural Seichel of Hashem. The Ruishi Yepoyel Ze Hashem is Borah that Hashem should create that. The Adubish Einer Kach Seichel Eloki Sira Hashem is Borah because Hachachama the Moshe Sira Teva Lifol Hashem Shayach Lifol. So the same way again is repeating himself that. that, that that again, it's, it's similar to the, to the bashal of, of the nature that he's working through nature to create things. He works with the chachamim to create things. What's interesting about this is, is that then it comes out that, this, that the chachamim are really the partners of Hashem in creating the Torah itself. And Hashem is working through the chachamim to complete the Torah. So it's it's a it's a, it's a participation. It's like a partnership. Implying that the Torah is not finished, or what do you mean? Uh, of course, not, it's not finished. It's, it's well, constantly being added. I mean, we're all the common are constantly adding. I mean, it's not constantly. I mean, I, I'm going to ask a question, and I, and I, and I, I mean, I hope it doesn't refute debate the premise of this, this discussion. But in the 13 principles of Rambam's faith, we say that the Torah is the same Torah that was given to Moshe Rabbeinu. That's one of them, and also another one is that um, the Torah will never be changed. It's like no additions, nothing subtracted. So it seems like, like he just asked that like, if the Torah's not complete, then how do I understand those statements? First of all, you could be talking about the uh, uh, about the Raisa. You could be talking about the Torah, 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 in, in terms of that Hashem, well, first of all, it says, it says that everything that a Talmud is in the future, would, be, would, would in the future, in the Chabish, was part, was included within the original Torah Shabbat Peh. So even Torah Shabbat Peh itself all, all, you know, included and encompassed everything that would come out in the future. So you could think of it just in terms of, in terms of the, the, the Rabbonins is just like unfolding. It's, it's, it's generating, according to those same principles, you know, things that, that were before. But obviously, the Torah has to uh, constantly be, be adjusting to, to account for new things that come in. That saying the Ramah was speaking about the Torah Shabbat Either that, or he was saying, he, he meant to say that everything was ultimately included within the original Torah. Nothing's been added to it in the sense that it was all there to begin with, and it was all... It was all uh, encompassed. You, and then, and then like, unfortunately, Christians and, and Muslims can interpret it, or anyone can just start a new religion and interpret it and say, well, yeah, we're, it seems that it's different what we're saying, but really we're just filling in the blanks that, that God that, that wasn't okay. given to Moshe Rabbeinu. First of all, they openly refute tremendous basic principles. No, um, basic principles. Yeah. The very idea of saying that, that Hashem gave up on Yidin and, and chose them instead. That's like the most, you know, and besides that, they say that they don't have to all follow the Torah. So it's the most basic thing in the world. So there's no way that they can say that the no, I, I use religions that already exist, but what if someone else decided to come out and make a new religion? I mean, nowadays, every person that's walking down the street has over religion. Yeah, but, what, but what, if, what religion could say that they're not refuting anything that's in the Torah? No, if they weren't refuting anything in the Torah. Now, well, this is also a guy but if, they, if they're not, if if they're not yeah, refuting yeah, anything in the Torah, yeah. then it would be a branch of Judaism. It would be a, some kind of a Hiddish in Judaism. And if it's not, and if it's not a valid Hiddish in Judaism, then, it, then that means it's not from the Torah. If it is a valid uh, branch of Judaism, well, you could say the Hashem came up with a, with a, a new Torah, but it's not. It's all derived from, from previous things. Or you could say it's already in the Torah, but it has to be revealed within the exactly, Torah. That's what we're we saying. can't actually. That's exactly I, it's, what we're it's saying. It's like a different perspective. Suddenly right, you'll see right. that it's something that, that was necessary yeah. for, in that generation had to come out. You, so you could say that the, 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 those say the Ariza was, was revealed. New things in Kabbalah, tradition in Kabbalah, that never were, were revealed before that, because you just had that revelation. In the show. It was all within the Torah, but it was it, 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 it took that long for us to be ready to be able to uh, to, to receive it. But there's, it's been throughout. I mean, you had you had Katshats, you had all time, all, many many heretical things coming up within the Mishnah, like the Karaites, and all kinds of things, like the few things that they called themselves Jews. They were Jews you know, very often. And they came up with new things that. Ultimately, were you know, in the course of time, were shown to be false or you know, refuted or became their own religions. Or whatever. It's, it's, a, it's a constant, uh, constant evolution. Okay. So anyway, as well as my double shehib seichel kila gamri lui shehib. Okay. Al de shnei am atoyr he shleim asuruda. Ma she see there Hashem is borech as achachomen lios mesakne ma she rui lesak. So the fact that the idea that Hashem set up the Chachamim 
to be misakin those things which they were supposed to be misakin because they, they they established certain things that they had to establish so that already was included in a pasuk in the Torah the fact the very fact that Hashem set it up like that says so it says in the Torah itself in in, in Durham, it says don't sway from anything that they are going to tell you. Now, Hashem always said that authority, that the, the Chachamim are going to tell you things, and you have to listen to them. So that's in addition to what's always said, is, is said in the Torah Shabbat So he's already telling you to begin with that the Torah Shabbat was built into the Torah Shabbat that I'm telling you now, you're going to have to listen to the Chachamim in every generation. So he set up the Chachamim to Gunusakim, whatever was necessary according to their understanding of what had to, what was required for that, uh, at that time. And a person can't say those things that, that the nature kind of added in you know, the course of time to the original creation, that that, was, uh, that wasn't from Hashem. Well, you could say that. Because that's, that's actually that, that is one of the basic things that we talk about, you know, the, 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 the problems with evolution, the theory of evolution, right? So one of the problems is, of course, they say that everything started by itself. But, but even if you don't want to say that, even if you, if you, if you reject that, you say, you know, Hashem created life or created, or created the, the, the physical, you know, existence, right? But then, but then, on the other hand, they say, well, look, things developed, you know, things, things... Uh, well, still today, uh, there's still, there's still animals that metamorph. Right, right. So that's part of the creation. They were exactly, created so like that's that. the point. In other words, you can't say that just because it happened over time, that therefore that wasn't from Hashem. It was like Hashem created... The, the Bria at the time of the Bria and then he, he left you know he, he, he built into the Bria systems and, and algorithms and, 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 and you know modes of development he built into the begin with and as things developed as, as, as nature worked throughout all the, all the, the generations all the millennium they, they, it, those things are proceeded according to those uh, those principles. But Hashem created the principles to begin with, so therefore it was a from Hashem. The people that deny this are the same people that believe in apes. And I believe this people are probably from apes. <laughs> the fact, I mean, I, I, and also the question is where, where a body came and where a Hashem come, comes from is two different things also. So you know, they also know that. But there's, there, I, I did, when I was looking into these kinds of things, I did hear that the, the European evolutionists are more determinist than the American evolutionists. The American evolutionists are, are really bound to this idea of random, uh, random mutation, creating things that just like happen on its own. Right, right. That's what they say. That's, uh, I, I read that someplace. That they, that they so feel that it had to be built in. They don't want to talk about God, obviously, but they, but they want to say, and at, least, least, at least they're saying that it was... The, this is American. Huh? This is American. No, the Europeans. The Europe Darwinism. Europeans. Darwinism. Yeah. You're going from Darwin's... Uh, it all okay. it all stems from Darwin, but yeah. apparently there are two different schools. Right. And there were the more determinist ones and the more random ones. So the random are the Americans. The random seem more than the American system. And the, the, the Europeans... And which one out of the two, in my uh, uh, lack of in understanding, would be more kadosh? I'm not saying Yiddish kadosh. I would say that it would be a little more consistent with Yiddishkeit to say, or with the concept of a creator to begin with, to say that it was more deterministic because there was Hashem set it up to begin with that it was going to develop in this way as opposed to saying that it's just random but it doesn't, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't connect with, with the Yiddish guy anyways there's part of the evolution theory correct me if I'm wrong is that we evolved from apes and we're just a little bit far-fetched I don't see why I don't, I don't, I don't really know the basis of that no but apes also de developed from amoebas you know it was like right, a so whole right so slowly uh, a process I, don't to, I, don't, I yeah. mean I feel like God oh, I mean oh, I live in the Torah so I believe that like God created us this is a very very big tangent, so I don't want to get into it. I'm, trying to, I'm not trying to make evolution stashed in with the Torah because it's not, uh, it's not ne it's neither necessary nor maybe possible. I don't know. Whatever. It's like. Anyway, so um, okay, so he's saying that that the ain udim shit. Yeah, right. The kach dovar zeva atzmoi mashetikni chakomim makol himen shemizbura tasher sidus alchok musam lifo the sichu mashu in the sakas. So he says in the same way. As you can't say that it didn't that it didn't come from Hashem, just the fact that Hashem was working through nature. So in the same way, 
we have to say that whatever the Chachamim did also is from Hashem because Hashem sent, set up the Chachamim to work according to certain principles with the, the Seichel that he gave them and the continued guidance and uh, you know throughout the generations and in Ruach HaKodesh and all these kinds of things as well but, it, he, uh, but he, he set them up with the Seichel to be able to produce that which he intended them to produce so in other words so what, what happened is that Hashem set it up so he doesn't have to make another revelation that has seen I every every uh, hundred years, you know, to, to to handle all the new stuff that's going to come up. I wouldn't mind the revelation. <laughs> <laughs> he, but he didn't want to do that, so you know, so he set it up to the Shemi Chachamim that keep up with it on a regular basis. So that's the big question: you know, How can we make a bracha? On a, on a mitzvah to Rabbonin, like Chris Megillah, or, or a Lekas Aneiros, Asher... Metilat Yadayim. Huh? Metilat Yadayim. Good question. Okay, and then also, Asher Kitshuni v'mitzvoy sa v'tzivuni. So it says, means that he was Makadish us with his mitzvahs, and he commanded us. So we, these things are, are not the rest of the Rabbonin. So how can we say that? Because he's preparing uh, based on the, the, the Shabbos. Loimar, ki akol sira Hashem izborach, harei hi mevia kashet ha'ayin v'gorim ha'ayin sh'akol ashkashet ruidia. So if Hashem is only working through the Chachamim, and, and it was his intention to begin with, that these mitzvahs that Hashem, that, that, that the Chachamim are going to enact are really from him, then either is, 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 is just an intermediary. So they're still back from Hashem. It's, it's a, at the corner that the Chachamim were, were misakim. Okay, it says he's, okay, so now he's prepared basically in Vumas. Omar Rav. Can I ask a question though? Sure. If, if, um, if this was part of the original plan, why is there a distinction between the Rabbana and the Raisa? You just say that the Raisa should be in the Rabbana. Because, again, Hashem wanted to set up an, a system which would be adaptable for all generations. He couldn't possibly right into the Torah all the things that would come in the future because he'd be talking about things that didn't exist yet and nobody would know what he's talking about anyway so he couldn't he had to create a system whereby there would be a continuing chain of authority and, and they would be speaking for him basically they would be adapting why wouldn't they have and the power of the rest of it? Why, or why, why wouldn't that become the Raisa? Because again, he wants to make a distinction. He's saying here, I don't know if you want to really get a rationale exactly why Hashem set it up that way, but Hashem is making a distinction between what he calls the Seiko Elion and the Seiko Uda, the Seiko Chachomen. There's, there's two different levels. That if he wanted to make a, a, a distinction that there's certain things that are transcendent, maybe pressure for the, for the idea that, that if the Chachomim are misakin something, they have to give a reason for it. They have to give a, 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 a source for it and a reason, and it has to be something that's, that's alti seichel. They, they, they can't make a tukum without saying why they did it. Whereas the Hashem made misses without getting any of And then we, no we have to we take then with the responsibility for it. Like you make your bed and then you've got to lie in it. Uh -huh. the, the the story, I forgive my ignorance, but the buck call went out and they said that Rabbi so and so was right. correct, and, right. and in the end they you know, they sure argued that. Right. So so we, you know so we we, we, we made our bed and now we got to sleep in it. But there's because, another uh, there's another aspect to it. There's which another... is bad. Yeah, I don't know if it's bad, but <laughs> no, it's, it's, it just means we have to take on the responsibility. Yeah. But the point is, on the other hand, Hashem committed himself to that, and He said, "I'm going to back you up," and even if it should be in Shemaim, it's like this. I'm, I'm going to say that that, that 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 you have to go, you know, that, that according to the common, they're correct to follow the the, the system uh, as it was set up, and I'm behind it. So basically, he's saying, I'm going to I'm going to adjust you, this is the way it's supposed to be okay. to what you're saying it's supposed yeah. to be. It was because I gave you the authority to say those things, and also this is what gives us shenachas. You know, Hashem gets tremendous pleasure out of seeing how we grapple with these things and how we make it our own and we care about it and we, we you know, and we take responsibility for it. Exactly. I wonder if this is a parish in the Pasuk in, in the beginning of Horatius, I think, Pasuk 26, that says that the heretics use this Pasuk all the time to say that there's more than one God or something crazy like that. How it says, let us make man in our image. Right, right, right. I feel like let us is God speaking to the tzaddikim or even, even to the individual neshama and saying, and us, you yourself are now a partner with me in creating yourself, basically. I mean, it says that, 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 that man is a partner with the Shem, and I suppose it's... I mean, it's so the kidney made us in his image to be a partner with him. Exactly. Yeah, this is a very important thing to understand. Okay. So now he says, okay, so he's bringing this Gemurah. Omarav, Omarav, Remez Lishniyas Minatoyah. 
book is this idea of shnius, which is extra arroyous, uh, you know, uh, immoral, uh, you know, incestuous relationships or whatever. What does shnius mean? Shnius is uh, saying there it's an no, added second. level. It's a second level, oh, second level. of, okay. of um, Understand. Arroyas that are also things that, that, that are not prohibited by the written Torah, but are prohibited by the Chachamim. Right. The next one. So he says, Shenema is kol atel evois huel usi anshe huuritz. So it says that the, that all of these abominations, um, the people of the of the land did. Okay. So he says, "Hu'el kushes miklal deika rachlakus." So the word "el" here, "el" instead of "ela," because "el" is, the, is these, right? The word "ho'el" here is these, these abominations, right? So these, these so uh, "el" is, uh, I think, it was referring to as "el" is is, uh, is a lotion of something hard, you know, like. Uh, uh, who, who is not like you among the strong ones? It's like something very strong. So he says, if they're strong ones, then there must be weak ones. So why is he saying that these are strong you know, abominations? Meaning that there must be weaker abominations that aren't included among those extra ones. So it's always it's a, it's a remit. Because this is an allusion to the idea that there are, it's not even a pshat, it's a puzzle, but it's, it's an allusion to the idea that there must be some more arayas that we should also assert, that are, you know, we should also forbid, and but they're lighter than the ones that, uh, that, that are spelled out. Um, not new shnias. So those, those weaker ones are the shnias. Rabbi Hid Omar Omar, Izen Rechiker, Tiken Meshulam Harbe. So this is talking about Shlomo Melech, that he, uh, he, he investigated, he delved into things, and he, he, was, he, he established a lot of Meshulam, a lot of uh, 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 Mishlein, or Proverbs, or Meshulam, like metaphors. So he made, made a lot of these metaphors of animals. Uh, is ma- Mashal. Yeah. Mashal. Uh, different different Mashal and different, different kinds of allegories and references and stuff. So before Shlomo Melech came around, there was, now it's talking really about like the historical development of some of these Tekonos. So before Shlomo Melech came on the scene, it says that the Torah was like, uh, like, a, like a, a pitcher with no handles, right? Because you couldn't grab onto it, you couldn't really use it because it was, it was not totally accessible. It was, something that was, it was hard to grasp because it, it didn't, it, there was nothing to grasp it. So he says, Ajah um, Shloim of the law is nine. And he created the ears, you know, he created these handles onto this, this vessel so that we'd be able to pour it, you know, to really use it properly that we're supposed to. Rabbi Oshaya Omar, Mehochem, Parehi al Ta'avur, Boy Shita al Be'ula. If I have my, uh, my commentary here, I'd be able to explain it better. I don't, I don't remember the Pesach. So, so he says he's bringing, he's, the Rabbi Oshaya is saying some kind of a Moshe here. He's saying, what is, it, what is it like? Le'udam mishamer pardes, if a person is guarding his orchard, okay? Mishamer the chitz, kilo mishamer. If he's if he's if he's on the outside and he's and he's protecting it, he's guarding it from the outside. Then the whole thing is guarded. Mishamer be b'fdim, shalifnim mishamer. The so 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 it's so, 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 so if he's all if he's from the inside, he's guarding from the inside, then only the inside is is uh, guarded. The outside is not guarded. No, it's, it is, if he guards it from the outside, it encompasses the whole thing, both inside and outside. But if he's going to guard it from the inside, then he's not guarding it from the outside. So I my representative in the store, he said it was a store in the Kovish line. Uh, the deal, I think it is something. And the the kupa, the the the, uh, um, the cashier, is like in the back of the store. 
So in, in, in the outside, you know, on the street, they have all kinds of stuff set up. You know, so what is it? the Hof Strauss, the clothing store in the Hof Strauss, in Meir Shirim. Uh, just to, is that what you're talking about? No, no, it's in the Chobi Shalim. There's a new store there. Oh, in Tzfat? In Tzfat, yeah. Oh, sorry, I thought you oh, mentioned Yerushalayim. No, 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 Chobi Shalim, yeah. Oh, okay. So, and, and so there's, and, and so there's a lot of things that, uh, you know, you're in the back, and if someone takes something from the front, you know, then what are you going to, what are you going to do? So, so he said, well, we have cameras. <laughs> you're going to go run after somebody after, how are you going to find anyway. right, so, but that's, but that's an example. Like, you know, if you're, if you're way in the back, you can't, you can't guard what you have on the outside. No, it would never work in New York City, but it's not, <laughs> not that many thieves, maybe. Or what was it? They leave stuff on the street overnight. And yeah, I mean, I love New York. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so the, 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 okay, so they ask a question there, but how do we have Ashi Badisa here? So they ask him, this doesn't, doesn't make sense. Who some should have fun of me on the stand? Who for you love Shnir? So he's, he's trying to make a, a muscle to the idea of the Arois, of this idea of the Shnir, of the Arois. So he's saying that, that would be, so by the Arois, we're, we're protecting the major Arias by forbidding also these lower level no, Arias, these less less uh, strong Arias. So, so he, and, he, and he's and he's trying to explain it with this muscle, with this this, uh, with this analogy. So he's saying it doesn't make sense because over here by this, this muscle. So you're saying how you can protect the outside, but he says. At least, at least the out, the, the, it, it, at least also, he just says at least the inside. Even if you're protecting it from inside, at least the inside is still is still protected. But when you're talking about the shneis, if you didn't have the shneis, then you would be altogether uh, uh, hitting hitting the major. There would be no buffer before you get to the to the shneas, right away you're hitting the major the major arraya. So it's not a it's not an analogy. That analogy, at least even if you don't protect it from outside, at least the inside is being protected here. If you don't have shneas, you're not gonna be protecting anything at all. Kahano Mami Hope. Ishmaz is trying to make a different a different thing. Ishmaatin has Mishmarti, Usi Mishmer is Mishmarti. So he's saying that posik. Ishmaatin is Mishmarti. Obviously says you should you should protect my protection. It was put like an extra fence around the fence that I already have. So, so he says, you should make it so. So, Omalei Abaye the Rav Yosef. Hadaraisa. Hadaraisa. Omalei mi the Rav Bunan. Yikra esmachta ba'alba. So he says, if that's the case, then you're taking, it's, it's, it's Mabish Daraisa, because you're getting a Pesach Mabish Daraisa. So he says, no, it's a Rabban, and the, and the Pesach is in a Smach Daraisa. So not, Smach Daraisa is something that's, that's alluding to it, you know, you can learn, you can, can see it in the Pesach, but it's not such a strong thing that you're actually learning out of it. Okay. The Kasha Dian Amir Vurim Eli. So now he's going to try to explain this whole Medrash. Kasha Dian Amir Vurim Eli. Tim Saki Kol Echad Nusim Tam Le Yichad Le Mitzvah of Gozer Chachamim. When you really look into this, you see that each one of these Chachamim and their explanations and comparing it to a different thing, um, they are, um, each one is, is, is giving a different reason to the Mitzvah that, that the Chachamim will go to. Ki Rui Le Hisrach Hech Mi Le Hisrach Hech Mi Dvurem Shehein Gam Ken Chait. On the one hand, it's, it's, it's proper to, to distance oneself from things that are also of Avis, even though they're not explicitly said in the Torah. But there are things that are also of Avis, they're also bad, they're also things we shouldn't be involved in, but they weren't so bad that I shouldn't ask them directly in the Torah. So it's not so hard as, as, as something that's mamish in the source of the Torah itself. Still, it's also an Avis, it's also some kind of incestuous thing that you should be careful about. Now, it's interesting, you know, where you make the distinctions, because, for example, uh, 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 uncle is allowed to marry his niece. So you can say, you know, why is that allowed and other things are not allowed. So obviously there's, you know, certain certain reasons why some things are and some, and some things are all together. And it's very hard with the rice because a rice with their is a chok. It's not something that's very easy to figure out what's 
you know, why these things are also. And there are cultures where these things are also. also. So it's, it's difficult to, to do, that do hold some standards, but other ones they don't. So, um, it just seems wrong. It's interesting that in most cultures, in like the American culture, in this most backwards, confused place, they still realize. I'm saying even before the Torah was given, there was still a concept of other rights. We bump back to the time of, of, of Noah. I mean, one of the reasons that the world was destroyed is because they were very immoral. But they, but they were, they were because they were going. It says, it says by. Um, the whole thing with with um, with Dina, why it was considered to be such a bad thing, well, and also also the mice with uh, with um, uh, Zimri. Right? These, were, these were examples where the Goyim were Machir, their their daughters, for Znis, right? And it says why were they so uh, strictly punished for that? Because the Goyim had also taken on themselves certain standards of, of morality, but they were and for the seven bits of already there was an idea of, of, uh, of some standard of morality, which is uh, you know, some, which included some you know incestuous laws also laws about regarding incest. So um, all of these things were. So let's try to get to the end of the paragraph if I can. Okay, so you take hot. Possible that somebody should take something that one in a very, very terrible thing, and something that's very close to it is, is nothing at all. There must be that that thing that's close to it is also a degree, you know, of a thing. By Shabbos also, the, the major malochas are something that's also from the, from the Torah and the strictly punishable. But the idea of a shvis, which is something that, that, that the Rabbanim will ask you because it's similar to that, which is also. What is a shvis? Shvis is a, is a, a malochah of the Rabbanim. It's an issue to the Rabbanim. Shabbos. Oh, Shabbos. 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 It's a Rabbanim and Shabbos. Something that's close to it, but not the thing itself. So therefore, 